Hello and welcome to Paleoverse for our special edition 2014 in review video. This year was one of the most exciting years in paleontological history. 35 new non-avian dinosaur species were named, almost one new species a week. Hundreds of other new fossil creatures were discovered, and many previously known creatures got makeovers. Here's a recap of some of the coolest discoveries. The first discovery of the year was a truodontid named Gobi Venator. Truodontids, close relatives of birds and dromaeosaurids, or raptors, are known from only a few, mostly poorly preserved, fossil skeletons. But this species, who lived at the same time as Velociraptor, is known from an almost complete skeleton! This new find helps us fully understand truodontid anatomy and piece together what we've learned from other dinosaurs. A new group of hawk-like toothed birds from the Cretaceous period, the Bohironithids, was first recognized this year. We often think of pterosaurs as the sole dominance of the Mesozoic skies, this group shows that birds has become much more diverse by the Cretaceous than we had ever thought. A fragmentary fossil from Alaska revealed something rather unexpected. A dwarf tyrannosaur! Named Nanukosaurus, or polar bear reptile, it was less than half the size of other tyrannosaurs, and only slightly bigger than the raptors from Jurassic Park. Because it was so small and lived so far north, it might have been completely covered in a thick, fur-like coat of feathers. 2014 was an exciting year for pterosaurs in particular. The most primitive known pterodactyloid, or short-tailed pterosaur, was named Cryptodracon. Two bone beds consisting of many well-preserved specimens of new types of pterosaur were discovered as well. In fact, some of the best pterosaur fossils ever discovered. One of them, Hamipterus, is the earliest known relative of the seabird-like pteranodontoids, and is known from several fossils, including well-preserved eggs. Some of the skulls had much bigger crests than others, suggesting that they were sexually dimorphic, like many birds. The other, Kaiuajara, is a tapajarid, a type of bizarre short-beaked pterosaur with an enormous crest. It's known from over 50 partial skeletons of all ages, so it's one of the few fossil creatures which we can know exactly how it grew up. This year seems to have also been the year that nerds took over pterosaur taxonomy. A new species of pterosaur was named Icrondraco after the aliens from Avatar, and a former species of pterodactylus was named Aerodactylus after the Pokemon. One of the weirdest discoveries of 2014, or indeed even all of paleontological history, was the early marine reptile Atopodentatus. Its name, meaning roughly strange teeth, is definitely an understatement. This creature's bizarre-looking mouth would have been used to filter sediment in search of food, making it a strange reptilian cross between a flamingo and a seal. Another group of poorly understood marine reptiles, the Hoopasuchians, had a very good year. Two new genera, named Parahoopasuchus and Eohoopasuchus, were discovered, and they were found to be early relatives of ichthyosaurs. Another recently announced ichthyosaur relative, Cartorhynchus, was an important transitional form between land-dwelling primitive reptiles and the fully aquatic ichthyosaurs. This group of ichthyosaurs and their newly discovered closest rel relatives were named Ichthyosaur Morpha, because in paleontology, we have to go with the obvious way to name things. A fossil of a 7 meter long nothosaur, another early type of marine reptile, was discovered, showing that marine reptiles had already become giant predators in the very early Triassic, soon after many creatures had gone extinct in the Great Dying, which was the biggest mass extinction that our world has ever seen. The discovery of the skull of a large herbivorous mammal from Cretaceous Madagascar revealed the appearance of a mysterious lineage called Gondwanatheres that were previously only known from teeth. This species, named Vintana certici, would have been a large groundhog-like creature with advanced senses of sight, hearing, and smell. A new type of porpoise called Semirostrum was discovered this year. Even by whale standards, it was pretty weird. It had a bony projection on its chin which made its lower jaw twice the size of its upper jaw. Scientists aren't sure of the porpoise of this creature's Jay Leno-esque chin, though it may have been used to shovel sediment in search of food. Two new representatives of an early group of arthropod relatives called Anomalocarids were discovered this year. These creatures were once thought to be a minor offshoot of the arthropod family tree, but recent discoveries have shown that they're a major diverse group in their own right. The first is Tamisiocaris, an anomalocaridin over a meter long with sieve-like appendages on the front of its head. It was, in essence, the arthropod equivalent of a whale. Amazingly, only a year earlier, a paleo artist had drawn a very similar creature for the All Your Yesterday Speculative Paleo Art Contest, and called it Cediocaris. The authors named this group that includes Tamisiocaris and its close relatives Cediocaridae in recognition of this. 
Another new anomalocaridin named Lyrarapax belongs to a different subgroup called Amplectobeluidae. Amazingly, this specimen has a preserved impression of its brain, which helped paleontologists understand the internal anatomy of these enigmatic creatures, and also allowed us to relate anomalocarids to the living velvet worms. Another interesting discovery from the Cambrian period is the bizarre creature Nisa Nectris. It belongs to a group of creatures called Vatulicolians, which have been one of the biggest mysteries in paleontology for decades. This discovery revealed that Vatulicolians are pretty closely related to vertebrates and very closely related to living tunicates like sea squirts. One of the biggest discoveries of this year is the giant titanosaur Dreadnoughtus. While estimates of its weight ranges from 25 to 80 tons, one thing is certain, it's among the best fossils ever found of a dinosaur that big. This discovery helps paleontologists understand what the biggest of the big dinosaurs looked like, such as the extremely poorly understood Argentinosaurus and Puertosaurus. The burial site of at least seven individuals of a new type of dinosaur even bigger than Dreadnoughtus was also discovered this year. However, scientists have yet to finish excavating and studying these fossils, so it might be a while before this new dinosaur, which might be the biggest one ever found, is properly described, so stay tuned. Going from some of the biggest dinosaurs to one of the smallest, a tiny new ceratopsian named Aquilops was also discovered this year. It is only known from a skull no bigger than a rabbit's, but this creature was an early relative of the giant horned dinosaurs like Triceratops. This year, many long-standing mysteries about theropod dinosaurs were solved. Hooray! Hooray, we solved them! Yay! We did it! Go team! No, we're not going to keep that? Okay, well, I tried. The partial skull of a Megaraptoran was discovered in South America. Megaraptorans were first discovered 15 years ago and thought to be the giant dromaeosaurid relatives based on the enormous claw they had. Now we know the claw belonged to the hand, not the foot. So it was thought that they were spinosaurids or special carnosaurs related to Carcardontosaurids. This new fossil, however, shows that they were more likely to be long-snouted relatives of Tyrannosaurs. Yes, these mysterious dinosaurs with long clawed arms are actually similar to the famously tiny-armed T-Rex. A different kind of similarly long-snouted Tyrannosaur was discovered this year as well. Chenjusaurus sinensis, or Pinocchio rex as it's been nicknamed, turns out to be the adult form of a dinosaur similar to the mysterious Tyrannosaur Elioranus. These dinosaurs, named Aleoromans, are smaller and more slender than T-Rex, having long pointed snouts with a row of small horns on the top. Several fairly complete specimens of a dinosaur named Anzu were announced this year, finally revealing the full appearance of a group of North American oviraptor relatives called Signing Nathids. Anzu, nicknamed Chicken from Hell, was a strange beaked dinosaur that was also big, about as tall as a person. New fossils of Spinosaurus were described this year, including the first specimen consisting of more than a few isolated bones that had been discovered since the original fossil, which was destroyed in World War II. These new finds suggest that Spinosaurus looked utterly ridiculous, with very short hind legs and webbed feet, more like an otter, or the walking whale Ambulocetus, than most other theropod dinosaurs. In fact, the discoveries of the new fossils suggested that its legs were too small for it to stand bipedally. However, neither fossil of Spinosaurus is very complete, so this is only one possible interpretation. Its pose, the length of its arms and legs, and the shape of its sail are all still being debated by scientists, because when do scientists not debate things? New fossils of Dinochirus, which had long been known only from a pair of enormous arms that were the largest of any animal ever, have been discovered as well. Two partial skeletons were announced last year to attendees of the annual Society of Vertebrate Paleontology meeting, but this year a black market dinosaur skull was found to be part of one of these skeletons. Dinochirus turned out to look like a cross between a camel, a sloth, an ostrich, and a duck, one of the weirdest of all dinosaurs. It used its strange beak to eat small prey, such as fish and water plants. As some mysteries are being solved, others are being uncovered. A partial hip from a newly discovered dinosaur named Tanglong was considered to be a Carcharodontosaur by its discoverers. But another researcher suggested it could be a Megaraptoran, a giant Compsognathid, or even a relative of Dinochirus. One of the most important discoveries of the year was a feathered ornithischian named Calendodromaeus. Ornithischians, despite their name, which means bird hips, in fact were di the dinosaurs that are least like birds. 
The discovery of protofeathers on Columbus means that the most ancestral dinosaurs probably had feathers, and only a few larger dinosaurs like ceratopsians and hadrosaurs re-evolved scales. In other words, feathers were far from a speciality of a, sm of a small bird-like celerosaurs, but a trait that was common to most dinosaurs. Two other ornithischians, Psittacosaurus and Tianlong, were also preserved with quills on their backs, but it was long debated whether they were unique structures or actually modified feathers. Now it seems that they were indeed feathers, and it seems likely that the fur, technically known as pycnofibers, of pterosaurs, which were the closest living relatives of dinosaurs, was also a primitive type of feather. Many other discoveries besides these have happened this year. Numerous new sauropods have been discovered this year besides Dreadnoughtus, though Dreadnoughtus is the only one known for most of a skeleton. We use the appearance of better-known relatives to guess what the complete animal would have looked like. The most interesting of these is Lankapol, which is South America. This is surprising because almost every other diplodocid is from the Jurassic, and most of them are North American. Two new early sauropods were discovered, a member of the long-necked Momenchosaurus named Huang Shanlong, and a new member of the recently discovered Teriosaurus named Zbi. A Japanese sauropod with strange crescent moon-shaped tailbones named Tomba Titanus was also discovered. Other new sauropods from this year include Catexaurus, a relative of the Lonchosaurus, which may have been the largest dinosaurs ever, Vahini, a mysterious sauropod that lived in Madagascar along with Ventana, the mammal we mentioned earlier, Yangjinglong, a bizarre-looking sauropod with absurdly large shoulders, and Rukwa Titan a titanosaur related to Catexaurus and Dreadnoughtus, known from fossils that have been buried and re-exposed by erosion multiple times. Two new early theropods were described this year, and named Tashiraptor and Panguraptor. Tashiraptor shared its environment in 200 million year old Venezuela, with the also newly discovered La Quinta Sora, one of the earliest known Ornithischian dinosaurs. A French abelosaurid named Arcovenator was discovered, showing that this group of strange-looking theropods weren't limited to the southern continent. Portugal had three new dinosaurs this year. Besides the bee, there was also the apex predator Torvosaurus gurneyi, named after the Dinotopia author, and the two-legged gazelle-like ornithischian Eosodryosaurus. New early relatives of the hadrosaurs or duck-billed dinosaurs, Zhang Hanglong and Plesiohadros, were discovered this year. The latter lived at the same time as Velociraptor, an early crested hadrosaur, Adelolophus, and a crestless hadrosaur with an enormous nose, Rhinorex, were also named. The armored dinosaurs Ziapelta and Zarapelta were discovered as well. This was the very good year for Z dinosaurs, apparently. The largest bird of all time, Pelagornis sandersi, was also announced this year. Its wings were 7 meters across, larger than even most pterosaurs. It also had a beak with serrated false teeth. A bizarre bird called Pumiliornis, perhaps best described as a cross between a hummingbird and a cuckoo, was discovered to be the first bird to pollinate flowers. A new fossil of Archaeopteryx, only the 11th discovered in 150 years, helped us understand how early birds evolved feathers. It seems that wings were first evolved to show off, not to fly. Another notable discovery from this year was that a group of small, pig-sized creatures called Cambathiers from India were in fact the ancestors of perissodactyls like rhinos and horses. They had five digits on their hands, which later evolved into the hooves that their evolutionary descendants are known for. An early relative of hippos named Jagermerix was also found this year, with large and sensitive lips that it probably used in conjunction with its mobile snout to feed on water grasses. This animal was actually named after Mick Jagger for its peculiar features. And that's it for the most exciting paleontological discoveries that have come to light over the course of 2014. The new year is sure to bring us plenty of new and exciting discoveries that will change our perception of our planet's past. Thanks for watching. For more updates and information, follow our Facebook and Tumblr, and subscribe to future episodes that will explore our ancient past. Next time on Paleoverse. They were the most successful group of reptiles to ever have walked the Earth. They occupied every possible biome, developed every possible adaptation, and became one of the most dazzlingly diverse groups in all of Earth's history. Dinosaurs. Their world comes to life.